It's ironclad time, everybody. Can we make it three for three here? That is the question before us today. Hmm. Hmm. Pretty low odds that this successfully snipes. Could be a pretty cool act one, though, otherwise. A more reason. Oh, no, I wouldn't call this reasonable. Fire Leap Fire into Whiff. The Good Path. If we're lucky enough to find three events in three event rooms, then we could get an elite fight for free here. Which I think the Ironclad can use particularly well. Boss Swap's reasonable as well. I don't think trading current health for max health pays off very well here. That could be a nice investment in our future. There's no other way to snipe. Well, we could snipe this one too. Pretty bad though. Removing a strike, I think, is also pretty reasonable. But then what path do I end on is the question. I, I don't know that if you remove a strike, you can't careen into this first elite, surely. I'm going to try for the snipe. I like Nyam's Lament on Ironclad in particular because the Burning Blood means you can heal from uh, hit events that cause you health loss. Go first card headbutt. That seems fine. And this is exactly what I was thinking of. We can upgrade two random cards for essentially significantly reduced cost. Since we're getting 11 more health, well, 12 more health out of the Burning Blood. We're only currently missing one. So this is only costing us 14 health, essentially. For one strike upgrade and one defend upgrade, I think that's a good deal. A Searing Blow is cute. This is not a Searing Blow path. Carnage, though, is very nice. 20 damage for two energy. Hits like a truck. Could still fail the snipe here. There's definitely a chance. Scrap ooze, that's good. I'll click a couple of time? Hmm. Not sure. Yeah, I'll click a couple times. One, two. I'm out. And then we're offered a card removal. Strike remove seems pretty reasonable. At this point. Bunny is, well, helpful eventually, this act. I like being ahead at card removal. Alright, and we do get the Elite for free after all. It's Sentries, which is probably the nastiest of the three for us. Well, maybe not with Headbutt. Getting us a Dream Catcher, which I am not thrilled by. A Whirlwind that I know will be useless in the upcoming Elite fight. Disarm or a Wild Strike? Since we're fighting Hexaghost, I guess I'll take the Disarm, but I'm a little bit worried about Gremlin Knob. We have to upgrade Carnage. There's no question there. Plus eight damage, and we have the headbutt to get it back on top of the deck, too. Okay, that's actually a very good turn one. Uh, ideally, next turn we get Bash, but not Carnage. It's okay if we get Carnage, though. We do get Carnage. Carnage and Bash. Looks like we play the Carnage. Question mark? Ow. Well, that's a draw order. Thanks, Legavulin. Boop. 
fades back in. All right, this is this is now death with the relics we've found so far. And that means we have to veer to the left. Especially with the potions I found. We got no good potions, no good relics. Uh, at least our cards are okay. And the good news is the disarm helps us get through the Hexagos fight. So we can escape the axe, but we're in really rough shape. Frogan, thank you so much for six months. Do I take a double tap? I'm not thrilled by it. Actually, with Kunai, it's better. I'll give you a try. And I'm definitely happy to see Bag of Marbles. That's a relevant relic. Applying one week on turn one. Very good with Carnage. Maybe we'll double tap Carnage turn one in a lucky fight. Removes the artifact layer from sentries. Unfortunately, I think it would be certain death to head into this fight. Double tap headbutt puts headbutt and double tap back on top of the deck. Classic. So double tap headbutt just kind of infinitely recursions itself. Okay, flex is a lot more interesting. Well, no, it's not. Never mind. I don't want any of these cards. I think I need some pummel strikes to want to flex. With double Ancient Potion, you know? That's a way to beat Hexaghost. Flex Ancient Potion. You're not wrong. I do have pretty good upgrades already, though. And I only got one upgrade. If the game wants it to happen, there'll be a Flex Plus soon. 54 gold in a strawberry. That's a very nice outcome from a question mark room. Actually quite thrilled with that. And now I'm definitely going to the store. I think. What? You what? Hello? Courier. Right before the shop. Now that's interesting. Go left and get two more. With Courier, I do have reason to actually avoid that store because I can simply visit a shop in Act 2 and have like 800 gold or something. That also gives me an idea for a seeded run. Is there a seeded run? Uh, like a, a Slay the Spire seed? where you just visit a whole bunch of question marks in Act 1 and every single one of them is a treasure chest? There's probably some RNG value somewhere that would force that to happen. If you can get 10 duplicate cards from a P-Box, or, well, 9 duplicate cards from a P-Box, then you, you can surely do that. I think I am going to go to this store, though. I want to look at a shop relic. I want to start removing cards. Um... And I want to find a potion that isn't these potions. So I'll fight this nerd. I'll defend here. Since I've got double tap carnage. Or just... Wait, really? One short? Ugh. That's heartbreaking. No, I'm too short. Never mind. That's not bad. Two short, one short, what's the difference? That against Hexaghost, does it really matter? No. Hey, we did get a better potion. Contemplates Iron Wave furiously. Hmm. Normally not a big fan of it, but I like it here with Double Tap and I like it here with Kunai. Although one might argue that the double tap and the bag of marbles make this whirlwind a bit better. I'm going to do something I haven't done in quite a while and give Iron Wave a chance in our deck. I accept you, Iron Wave, despite your faults. I was going to say you'd really prefer an upgrade, but Apotheosis can make that happen for us. Some mighty spicy things here, actually. Also worth considering, Ornamental Fan would double up on Ninja Relics, giving us 
immediate block in addition to dexterity when we play three attacks. Had I taken the flex, the orange pellets would look pretty good. I didn't take the flex, though. I still think Apotheosis is very good overall, though. Especially with a kunai. And I could even buy the shrug alongside. Ooh, spicy. Do I take the pellets? Probably not. Not currently feeling motivated. And the pellets come at the expense... I could do Ampo pellets, I suppose. But then I can't do shrug or remove. Definitely thinking it's Apotheosis, card remove, and then one of these two cards. And flame a lot juicier. Under the pellets could be any common, uncommon, or rare relic. It can't be shop relics, though. When Courier replaces a relic, uh, it's pulled from a random relics. I will buy the Apotheosis. Ooh, finesse. Wait, Finesse Kunai? Oh my! That's actually the card I buy. Amazing. Alright, let's do it. What am I removing now? A defend? Strike still? Strike still. And that's correct. The card, uh, anything that the courier replenishes uh, also fails to be affected by Ascension 16, 10% more price in stores, which is kind of interesting. Poor Hexaghost. Never stood a chance. What is this turn, by the way? Hello? Pretty sure I need this carnage. Let's go for the turn wave. The miss the bash the first time. A little sad. But now we can double tap bash, and that's gonna be good. Unless the straws carnage did. Well, I double tap carnage then. I also had the option to not play the finesse to deliberately avoid that scenario. Plus 13, just barely enough. GG. And we could have blocked that pretty easily, too. Don't forget that disarm meant that Hexaghost's Inferno was a lot weaker. Oh my. Corruption, Offering, or Exhume. Oh, this deck loves Offering here. Oddly, not a deck that really likes Corruption, as we prefer our skills be of the non-exhausting variety. Exhume is a decent for getting back Disarm, but kind of sad with Apotheosis. I'll take an Offering pretty happily. Uh, I'll also lose this second Ancient Potion. I guess we just discarded both of them, huh? That's sad. To, buy, to pick up a Fruit Juice. Don't drink this immediately. You at least want to look if there's a, a Sacred Bark here. There's not. Instead, there is two forms of energy. The Philosopher's Stone gives enemies additional strong. Or the Mark of Pain adds wounds to the draw pile. Or the Black Star causes elites to drop more relics. But we won't have the additional energy per turn. 
I'm thinking this is a pretty reasonable Philosopher's Stone. I don't really like our odds against elites on only three energy, but with four energy we'll be good, and because we have a disarm in the deck, we can counteract that plus strength pretty easily. If, it, if I didn't have the disarm, I'd be a lot more hesitant to take the Philosopher's Stone here. Uh, particularly because of how much scarier heart gets, but when you can remove that strength with disarm, it's really not that bad. The kunai also helps make this a lot more reasonable, also. So we'll take the Philo Stone. And. This doesn't look very reasonable. Maybe if I had a really good potion? That'd be a really good potion. I like having the option of how to get through the middle, though. Depending on how strong we feel when we arrive at this node, we can either opt into the elite experience or we can bail out and choose a path that is relatively free or even entirely free of elites. So I think I should at least get here and evaluate from there. Won't drink this fruit juice until I need to. Nice. Guess I'll just headbutt the double tap. Easy. Oh yes! Spicy, powerful block cards. Sure, Ilum. So, main main the theory with pathing. The thing that you're looking to optimize is additional strength per act. So you're trying to get as, as many positive bonuses to your deck as possible. Your main ways to do that are by upgrading cards at rest sites, by acquiring relics from elites, or by purchasing relics or cards from shops. You can also improve the deck by getting card rewards and money from combats and from finding things in events. But the most valuable nodes are going to be the elites, the rest sites, uh, and as long as you've got the money, the merchants. As well as, of course, the one treasure that you always get, but there's no pathing around that. So usually what I'm looking to do is maximize rest sites and elites. A approximately a one-to-one -one ratio of waiting there, but the specifics are always going to depend on your exact situation. Uh, and see if the, the path that contains the most combined fires and elites is reasonable to survive. Uh, if the elites are too early in the act or your deck isn't strong enough, this may not be the case. But if the deck seem if the if that path seems reasonable to survive, that's usually what I'm looking to get. Uh, otherwise, if your deck doesn't have a solid strategy yet, getting more card rewards from enemy rooms is always a good idea. I also tend to value going to enemy rooms more when I don't have potions in my potion slots, since one of the possible rewards from combats is potions. Require as much strength as possible, as quickly as possible. Exactly. Flexibility is also important when it comes to pathing. Can you delay your decision making until you have more information? Uh, and that's why I value getting to this node, because then I can I can delay deciding on yes elites or no elites until I see how many hit points I escape all of this with. By the way, I'm going to take the flame barrier. Do some hilarious stuff. Double tap. Headbutt. 18 by 4. 
72. Holy moly, this is a turn one kill. Double tap. Play headbutt two times. Headbutt puts double tap on top and then headbutt on top. Finesse draws headbutt. Headbutt gets played two times again. And then I can play strike. Cool. We'll drink the fruit juice now. We have two distilled chaos, letting me play the top three cards of the draw pile. And is that a shrug? It is. I want to be careful to not to add too many block cards, but I think this one's very reasonable since it also draws a card. We'd like to avoid attacks that cost two or three. Ow. Okay, I can't accept this draw on a debuff turn. We gotta get more cards in hand right away. Um, hmm. I don't wanna headbutt two things. Let's just do it this way. Next turn. Please have Flame Barrier again, I suppose. I don't think I'll be able to kill, because we'll be weakened. Bash Carnage won't be enough. So please give me Flame Barrier back. Go Epo. Shrug. Barrier. Enjoy your return damage, you nerd. Six, six, six. The number of the beast. Thirteen, seven. That should be exactly a kill, right? Good. Blood Potion is a nice heal. A second copy of Disarm I really like. Fully strengthening us against enemies who multi-attack. Although I'm worried that our kunai is getting further and further distant from relevance. But how do you decide between question marks and normal enemies? That is oftentimes a question of uh, are there any events that you're deliberately trying to find? But generally speaking, the question for me is easily answered. Um, are my potion slots full? If yes, uh, a heavy in heavier incentive towards events. Um, do I benefit particularly from looking at card rewards? If no, then events are a bit better. If yes, then combats are a bit better. For example, if you've got question card and you're able to see more cards per card reward, then looking at more cards is good. Looking at cards is also a nice way to find upgraded cards for free, which can be really helpful. The mod Terrence uses is called Info Mod in Kidu. I think that one's on the Steam Workshop. Not sure if I should go double thingamajiggy or take this blood potion. I'll take the blood potion. We've got a lot of max health. Two of the same potion seems a little awkward, too. Oh, man. And here's a payoff for the blood potion. The freaking Knowing Skull, man. You find yourself in an old decorated chamber. In the center of the room, a large skull sits atop an ornate pedestal. As you approach, the skull bursts into flames and turns to face you. What is it you seek? What is it you offer? In sync with its final words, the door behind you slams shut. You're allowed to pick these options multiple times, paying the health price each time. Every time you pick a particular option, it gets more expensive also. Money is very valuable here, given that we, well... We have a courier. And so we can spend any amount of money at a store. Although I'd like to be able to survive to get to a store. Which requires that I have some amount of health. Take some money, and I'm going to drink the Blood Potion, which we can do in the middle of the event. Take a 17 hit point heal, and I'll pay 6 health to get a new potion. 
Do I click gold, what, one more time? I think one more time. I'd like a lot of health to give me the confidence to fight an elite or something. Pro tip, never take the colorless card from this man. It's a trap. Exclamation point, yes, uh, exclamation point greed. How to 9,000 gold. This event right here. Although they did patch, because they changed how the event worked, so uh, that clip no longer works. The colored star cards suck? Yes, that's uh, that's ultimately the answer. The, the problem with this option is that you get a random uncommon colorless card, so you can't get any of the really strong rares like Apotheosis or Hand of Greed, uh, and you don't have the ability to turn down the card if it's not useful to you, so it often ends up being a, a dead card in most decks. The uncommon colorless pool is full of some weird utility cards that are ultimately costing you card draw, stuff like Forethought, stuff like Madness, Panacea. Yeah, it's added to your deck instantly. You get no right of refusal. And it's an uncommon, guaranteed. Now, sometimes sometimes the uncommon colorlesses could be good. Um, and if I could guarantee that he was going to give me three flashes of steals, I'd click this button three times right now. But I, I don't know that he was going to do that, so I'm not going to click it. I'll take one more, one more set of money, and then we're out of here. Because I would like to, I would like to go this way. And then this shop. We'll see. Oof. Go defensive here. That's just unacceptable. Just unacceptable. Okay, we can bash it and then disarm, or disarm it and then bash. I think I'll bash and then disarm. Take nothing here. And hopefully next turn I can block reasonably. Otherwise, we'll see. Oh yeah, we're fine. Shame I had to use my good potion, though. Could double tap this, take one? That's reasonable. Ravenock, thank you so much for that tier one sub. To the cozy sub club. Okay, we do get a potion back at least. Ooh, and we're offered a shockwave plus. Fly weak and vuln to everybody forever. Could also take an intimidate plus for a little bit less energy, just make it two turns of weaken instead, but I think this shockwave is way too nice. One of my favorite ironclad cards in general, and definitely my favorite way to get weak and vulnerable down. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm not afraid of book of stabbing, because we have two disarms. So... Even though that's exactly what we're facing, and we got the extra rude turn one... Big stab. Not cool. Uh, I think we'll still be okay here. Do I play Offering? Hmm. It's 
already a 3x3. Three three. We're actually going to bring it all the way down to 0x3. Or maybe 1x3. I'm going to try not playing Offering here. Eventually that weakens gonna wear off. That'll be a slight problem. I have one extra energy to spend. I don't want to draw the carnage. Oh wait, I might draw it anyway. Yep. Neener neener. That was beautiful. We didn't take a single point of damage in that fight. We got ourselves an anchor for 10 block on turn one, and now I feel very comfortable going into whatever this Burning Elite is. Burning Pact is nice card draw. Second Headbutt's fine. Getting harder and harder to use the Kunai. I really need like a Reckless Charge or an Anger or something. Only there was a zero-cost attack that I could put in my deck. Not you, Clash. You don't count. I'm going to upgrade Offering at that rest site. Okay, not Super Slavers is fine by me. I'm also extremely happy with Grim Leader attacking us on turn one, uh, as that usually means the fight's going to go in your favor. I tend to feel. I tend to feel. It's only going to be a seven by three after the shockwave. Eric Raz, thank you so much for thirty moons, three metric years. Happy 2022 to you too. I can headbutt that at least. Trick number. So I think I'll actually go defend a disarm. Don't play the shockwave yet. Oof. Mistakes were made. No, I don't like this. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, there's just not enough attacks in the deck. Oh, no. We're in deep trouble here. I might not have enough damage output for this fight. We don't have any AoE. That's a good attack, at least. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I've made a terrible mistake. Rod. Keep letting this happen. No AoE. It's fatal here in Act 2. Damn it. Um, what is the po I need to kill you at the very minimum. Do it this way. And I only really have one turn to solve this now. Could kill the angry gremlin, but should I? I don't think it's gonna matter. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oof. Does not be alive, huh? It was a whirlwind versus iron wave at the end of Act One. Indeed, would it have made a difference here? Probably. Is my guess. Probably. Hold on, we're still doing something here. I'm not dead yet. Headbutt doesn't get me there. We're gonna pack the bash then. I believe we have lucked out. I'm somehow still alive, which means I made the exact correct decision at the knowing skull. Whew. Okay, not dead. Yeah. White Bee Statue will replenish our potions. This rest site will replenish our health. We have an apotheosis, so I don't mind losing the upgrade. Pommel Strike is the missing attack. It's an attack that draws cards, and really what I think this deck needs desperately here. And yeah, I'm not going to pass a deck check like that until champ. Got it. Okay, everything was actually fine. Smiling Mask is here. Smiling Mask guarantees cheaper removals at shops, which is pretty dang nice too. Does override the cost reduction of the courier, but will still save me money here. Take it. I actually do want one more iron wave. Feels weird. The options here are kind of incredible. Waffle would heal us to full health. That's pretty spicy. Gurya, allowing us to lift up to three times. Could lift two times before champ. Um, because we have an apotheosis, I particularly like that Gurya. Also goes really well with what we have so far. Just make our attacks do a lot more damage. Pocket Watch is ridiculous card draw for Ironclad, although I think the Kunai speaks out against it a little bit. Ah. Corruption is, of course, here, making skills free. Very good with dis disarms, very good with the shockwave, very good with apotheosis. And I actually kind of dig it with the Iron Waves remaining, too. Oh, I like this corruption. I like that corruption a lot. I could do corruption Gurya card removal. That's pretty spicy. That's really spicy. 
I think I'm already beating Champ with 35 health. Waffle is... extraneous. Max HP is nice, though. Let's see what's behind Corruption first. What? Well, I'm gonna buy that too, I guess. It's a hell of a combo. Sure. And that means no Gurya for me, which is fine. I'll be upgrading these powers, maybe? Question mark? Not sure. Uh, now I actually do want to continue to remove strikes. Okay. Leftover money? But I have couriers, so there's pretty good reason to save money. Ah. And Skyzen says, how does rarity work in shops? Works like regular card rewards, but the base rarity, the chance for rare cards is significantly higher. We want the waffles. All right, I'll give them the waffles. Delicious. Delicious waffles. How'd I learn about the percentage chances for things? That is all via the lovely Slay the Spire referential spreadsheet maintained and documented by folks like Forgotten Arbiter. People who have data mined into the, the deep details of Slay the Spire and recorded these details for posterity so that I could conveniently learn them instead of doing the hard work. I don't believe seeing rares in shops resets your rare chance. Hello. You too. Double tap carnage and just donk. Dang. acquired. Thank you, White Bee Statue. I actually kind of dig a Berserk. The deck does want more energy. Well, maybe not with the Corruption, it doesn't. Berserk is probably not the way to get here. Hey there, Austin Dono. Grats on that first Ascension 20 win with the Silent of all classes. Good old Silent getting there. I'll skip these. I'll take one more event here. Over that. Which is, uh, the nest. Very, very late ritual dagger. Super not worth it. However, 50 gold? Definitely worth it with our courier. About half of a relic. They didn't even notice. Actually gonna choose to recall here. Giving me the opportunity to rest in the... Rest sites of Act 3. And then against Champ, our job is Barricade. We'll do some hilarious stuff. We can really bully Champ. It's gonna be great. Poor Champ will never know what hit him. Just gonna Corruption now. The reason for that is because this deck is actually fine once we lose all of our skills. Normally it's a problem, but not today. I'm 
frail though. No one can resist the power of the Iron Waves. It's a lot of metallicized, though, sir. Use the double tap next turn when I'm no longer weakened. Otherwise, I just have the same turn over and over here. Sure. Trying, but it's not working. Poor guy. Darn. I think he's eventually going to break through here. Cool. We're going to need that to work a little bit better if we want to be able to beat the end game with it, but that was cool. We would definitely like to be able to make our uh, damage increase over time. If only there was some way to do that. We could instead make our max health increase over time. That said, with impervious, uh, with a barricade and a corruption, I really like an impervious here. Just, just zero cost, gain 40 block, plus our dexterity. Pretty sweet. I'll take it. Yeah, we just need a body slam. Man. <laughs> I... All three of these relics do the same thing, but in different ways. Interesting. They're all boss relics that give functional card removal. Empty cage, we pick two cards to outright remove. Astrolabe, we choose three to transform and upgrade. Or the P-Box deliberately transform all of our strengths into fens. Not that many of them. Personally, more inclined to Astrolabe than to Pandora's Box. Reason being that I actually like the defend cards. They give me block, they work with the Kunai, and they're free with corruption. So I don't want to lose my defends, but I do want to lose the remaining strikes. And probably Bash, too. So I'll Astro like Strike, Strike, Bash, and then we really have no attack cards. Hmm. If 
box does have a higher chance to give us something really good. That is true. Why bash? Because it's a two-cost attack that does relatively low damage, and I have a much better source of vulnerable here in Shockwave. And I have Bag of Marbles, too. It's still useful, like we used it in Champ, uh, but I think we'll find something better shortly. <laughs> Double Barricade. The re re barricade -ing. That said, Blood for Blood is an incredibly good attack, as long as we can take a little bit of damage. And Battle Trance is fantastic card draw. We do have offerings, so this is at least a two cost. Very good. Hey, hey, everyone. Did you know that you can now support me directly on YouTube by getting a channel membership? For as low as five bucks a month, you'll get access to perks like custom badges and emojis to use in comments and discounts on the merch store, all while helping support me and this channel to do what I love every day. Just click the join button below to get started. Now back to the video. So many barricades, you'll wish he didn't have so many barricades. Okay, I'm thinking we can go four elites. This deck seems kind of absurd. Overall. Really still needs a body slam, though. That would be the best attack card we could add by far. Actually, four body slams would be the best attack card we could add by four. By far. Uh, fires don't do a whole lot for me. How do we feel about events versus combats? Events could be... Rare relics offered to us. Whereas card rewards actually just help me find body slam. So if I'm... In, you know, if I'm in insistent that I need to find a body slam, then I should go looking for body slam. That's pretty straightforward. Okay, let's go looking for body slam. Thank you, Anchor. That might explode. I think it would be difficult to prevent, given the relatively low damage of our deck of cards here. I do have liquid memories, at least. With White Beast Statue, there'd be no reason to prove to, uh, to not, but we drew the blood for blood, so it's all good. Okay, I've got a lot of days in the draw pile. Slight annoyance. Not playing that offering. or not Body Slam. Havoc could be pretty interesting. Play the top card of the draw pile and exhaust, and exhaust it. I don't think I want to power through as I don't have quite enough targeted exhaust, although it is pretty good block. I'll skip these. Fire Potion, you're also getting skipped. in this fight. Only for the longer fights. We do, however, need offering. Guaranteed kill next turn. It's all good. If 
you have a corruption, there's no such thing as too many shrug it offs. And that's doubly true when you've got a barricade, I think. Attack potion could be a body slam. That's a fun thought. Hmm. Transient could be a real problem for me. Let's get barricade in play. This enemy attacks for bigger and bigger numbers every single turn. Eventually overwhelming you with a constant offensive presence. Your own deck has to output higher and higher numbers each turn, or you'll be overwhelmed. To death. the corruptions in play. Everything's good. Here. One free attack. On me. Tell you later, nerd. Oh, can't have too many shrugs. That's what I said earlier. Still says now. More, please. Could also take in flame for damage scaling. Something we should seriously consider. Ignored. Oh, spooky. spooky. The, I think the idea behind the transient is, as the name implies, it's a temporary creature. Something that is fading or shifting or dissolving. And so it only sticks around in combat for a short time before its ethereal nature requires it to depart. I'm pretty sure I can get away with not playing this offering. Find out if that's true. Two stores have a higher chance of body slam. You only see two attacks in each store. So one store has two cards that could be body slam. Whereas combats have three cards that could be body slam. Although a guaranteed attack is gonna be more, more a chance of body slam than a random card. But I, I wouldn't say that uh, shops are necessarily particularly helpful here. I don't think feed would help. Feed is just gonna get in the way. Be really awkward. Let's skip all these. Could definitely gain max health with feed, but I have so few cards already that can damage things. I think it would become a problem. Pretty rapidly. Oh, too many shrugs, apparently. That's true, we can buy out the attack pile. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. Woof. Maybe I should 
should have exclusive potions. Still could, still could. Looks like we're fine. I mean, we might as well though. I have the white beast statue, right? It is. Body slam deals damage equal to our block. I'll take that one and I'll also take the next two or three that I see. And that should really cause the whole deck to kind of come together with uh, Giant Head very helpfully demonstrating this principle for us. Assuming we can draw a vaguely useful order. Play this corruption. Since I have double barricade, I actually appreciate the double barricade in this moment. Okay, we can burning pack to disarm. Wave, double tap, double iron wave, and then body slam twice for 500 damage. Yeah. Mob bank would give me maybe a reason not to spend any money here, but at least it'll be some cash until then. And I'll take another shrug. More shrugs, please. I would like all the shrugs, in fact. But sometimes the fact that I only have four energy does get in the way a little bit. Lose this for the moment. Good. That's more like it. Okay, we're fine. Take 12, play barricade. Not worth it. Second time we draw that body slam, it's deadly. Could take a third iron wave. I think the two that we have is actually completely fine. They've been working pretty well with one another. One life gives you barracks. Make barricade. When life give you nemesis. Make, make boots. That's a convenient turn. Go barricade, impervious, shockwave. Maybe should have dug for uh, corruption. Yeah, it was the top card even. Doesn't matter much. Please put this this back on top. Bonk. 
Paper Frog makes enemies who are vulnerable take additional damage. Why do I have two barricades? Astrolabe decided I needed a second one. I took the first one on purpose. Second one was an accident, but it's actually kind of worked out. Means we draw the barricade more early on, on average, and means I can use the burning pact on the other one. Let's take another flame barrier. Take the blue key as we need it to get to Act 4. This is our last chance. And the shop says... Would I like a mummified hand? To which I say, hell yes I do. We could also take the abacus here. Whenever we shuffle the draw pile, gain six block, and that's pretty potent too. Once we play all of the cards with the corruption, there's not a lot left. Abacus would help. Of course, card removals would also help. Abacus eventually make us infinite? No, not infinite. But it's like 18 or something block per turn once we have no skills left. It's okay. I think I'll take them both. And then I can maybe even afford... Yeah, I'll be able to afford a removal in the final store, thanks to Smiling Mask also. <laughs> Sundial behind the Abacus? That's cute. That's cute. Oh, I can't play both of these. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's more important to play Corruption than to play Barricade right now. Oh wait, I have Mummy Hand. What am I talking about? Of course I can play them both. That's what this whole thing was for. Now all I have to do is survive this. Easy. Easiest turn of my life. Probably gonna... Should wait. Not enough, okay. Unless they were to dupe pot it. Wait, what if I dupe potted it? Yeah, just body slam repto for 190? Okay. Maybe I will. And then I'll get a Dark Embrace Plus, which is the last piece of the puzzle. Now this will go off to Silly Land instantaneously. Dark Embrace right now would be really nice. I agree. It is really nice. It is. Okay, we have full health, so this upgrade really doesn't matter. I just came here to fight another elite. Guess I'll upgrade the corruption. But the upgrade barely matters. We're falling. I was hoping I'd be able to lose one of the barricades here. I guess we can lose headbutt. That's fine. I'm not going to lose offering or dark embrace. No way. No way. Now with Dark Embrace, anytime any skill gets played, we get to draw more cards. The Shrugs draw two cards. 
some stuff draws even more than that. Bonk. Panagraph is here. Rupture could give me strength, but we have no need for strength. Body Slam is doing all the work here. And it will continue to do so. Let's fight Time Eater. Time Eater will be fun. We're not that good. I mean, we have two disarms. We're pretty good. We're pretty good. I guess I'll upgrade the disarms. That way, if I draw those before Apotheosis, I'm less upset about it. Case in point. Corruption will make literally every other card in this hand free instantly. That's ridiculous. Okay, no perfect time eater for me. I'm okay with that. Love that offering for now. Kunai power. Abacus power. Easy peasy. The Act 3 boss you get is always completely at random. One out of three. If you feel like you're always getting countered by the boss that shows up, it might be that you're not taking the, your boss into consideration when you're building your deck throughout Act 3. If you arrive at the start of Act 3, look forward and see that it's Time Eater, and you've got a mostly Shiv-based deck, then you have an opportunity to add answers to the Time Eater to that Shiv deck, or to change the direction of your deck in time to be able to beat the Act 3 boss. Each of the bosses is designed to punish a different kind of deck building mistake or a different kind of archetype, so to speak. And so there's always the chance that whatever you created will fare poorly against the opponents you've got. a lot of card draw. Okay, we'll disarm Dekka, because Donu is dying first. Donu is dying right now, I think.
Actually, they're both dying right now, so I don't know what I'm talking about. So Donu and Dekka, these guys, they punish um they punish decks that are too I like to use the word slow, but decks decks that uh don't scale up their numerical output every turn. Uh they also really heavily punish low energy decks because they attack every single turn and increase their damage output every other turn. If you have to spend two or all three of your limited energy on defending against them each round, they'll eventually overwhelm the player. The longer the fight goes on, the better things go for Donu and Dekka. Whereas the Awakened One and Time Eater scale entirely dependent on the player's actions. You have full control over when Time Eater and Awakened One gain strength, but in Donu Dekka, it's all down to the timer. Okay, we'll upgrade the other Disarm, too. None of these upgrades really matter, as previously established. We do have enough money to afford it one card removal. That Whirlwind from earlier also saying, Hello, I'm back. But I'm very happy just removing... Blood for Blood? Because we, we got the Body Slam. We don't need the Blood for Blood. I do actually like the Iron Waves. I do actually like the fact that Carnage gets rid of itself. I do like the Pummel Strike. So yeah, let's lose Blood for Blood now. I could lose a second Barricade. No, I actually like that I have two of them. It's been working out for me. All right, these two. It's a pretty swift fight, uh, but I think turn one offering is going to mean we're completely fine here. Doubly so if I can find my Apotheosis or my... Nope, I can't. All right, well, dang. Understood. Hmm. Very well. This turn could hurt a lot, but thankfully we have Panagraph to heal us. Good. Okay, we'll skip this barricade. Disarm saves me a lot of health here. And Iron Wave does something similar? Ouch. Here we go. Corruption, Barricade, and Impervious. All managed to get put in play here. Probably about the worst this fight could have gone with Dark Embrace on the bottom. I think that's quite a statement. Because this went really well, ultimately. Both True Grit Plus and Feel No Pain are very nice here. Feel No Pain is block whenever a card gets exhausted, whereas True Grit lets us exhaust cards and gives us block. I'll probably continue to rotate Sean Dummett. My, my hope is that we'll be able to exceed the goal. And so every character will have at least 100. Maybe some of the characters will have more than 100 wins this year. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm taking this Feel No Pain. Got a mummy hand. I'm also taking this Power Potion over the Weak Potion, I think. We'll drink the Power Potion turn one, then get two more random power uh, potions, excuse me, against Heart on the turn one here. Particularly like Evolve, giving us more draw from statuses, or we could take Berserk for more energy. Take Evolve. 
And what do you got? Sneko Potion, Flex Potion. Got it. Okay, can I find Apotheosis? Exclamation point streak should be up to date. It might be one behind on the defect streak. I'm not 100% sure. But it should otherwise be accurate. Guess I'll play both barricades. That way I don't draw this one again. I appreciate it. You've been up on top of it, Failey. I'm going to trust it then. Thank you. We'll confirm maybe at the end of stream or something. All right. Uh, disarm would have been nice to see yesterday. Probably use the snack of oil for draw five. Maybe I'll do that before I play corruption even. No, because then I would waste of all draws. Draw five. Things get randomized, but skills stay zero because of the corruption. Here's that disarm. Make that a 0x15, not a 4x15. Don't have Dark Embrace in play. Understood. Don't play that one yet. Actually, do because I have no other statuses. Fair enough. Let's do some return damage. Spicy. Dark Embrace was, again, the bottom card, but again, not a problem. Card draw. the other flame barrier for a real hit. Hey there, Chrono. Alright, this fight is way over. That a, oh yeah, because evolve. I was like, how did that draw itself? Understood. Get him, Abacus. You got this. GG. Death by Iron Wave. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.